Hello, and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today, we are going to be holding a claim writing workshop where we go over the basic thought process often used in coming up with claims. So first, let's go over some basic claim facts. The claims legally define the invention. You can say whatever you want to in the written description, but when it comes to determining if someone is using your invention without your permission, which is called infringing, what is it that the other party would have to do? To answer that question, the first place one looks is the claims of the patent in question. So, if we need to know what a claim term is, or what a claim really means, we may look to the specification or written description to determine what a claim means. There are certain grammatical and formatting rules for claims. For example, every claim is numbered, and every claim ends in a period, to name just a few of the rules. It is one thing to write a claim that follows all the rules. It is another thing to write an effective claim. We could devote multiple videos to claim writing, but for this particular video, we are going to focus on the thought process for writing an effective claim. A main goal of claim writing is to get a broad claim that is allowable. Allowable means that the patent office will approve it to be in an issued patent. And broad means the opposite of specific. If the claim is too specific, it may be allowed but easy for a competitor to get around by simply changing minor details. So once again, the goal is broad and allowable. If you need more information on how claims work, I have a video that covers some of the basics, and I will put a link to that video in the description. After you pass your test to become a patent professional, it is common to take some workshops on claim writing. And often in these workshops, they'll start off with an example invention, and it might be something like this. Congratulations, you've invented the go-kart. And so the students will be asked to try and write a claim for the go-kart. And they'll let you get started, and you'll start writing something like a vehicle comprising multiple wheels, a motor, a steering mechanism, and a braking mechanism. Now please note that this claim and all the examples in this video that follow are not intended to be a real claim. We are taking some shortcuts and making some simplifications to illustrate the thought process while keeping the technical details from getting too complex. So just keep that in mind. So with that said, things are coming along with our claim, and then the workshop instructor will reveal that it's a trick question. Why? Because claims do not exist in a vacuum. They are written in consideration of prior art. What's prior art? It's the legal term meaning stuff that existed before your invention. And the instructor will say, to write an effective claim, we should consider what the prior art is and make sure that our claims don't read on the prior art we know of. Now, there is a high chance that there could be prior art that we don't know about, but we have to work with what we know. And now the instructor will tell you about a piece of prior art. Here is our prior art. Let's see about it. The prior art has multiple wheels. The prior art has a motor. The prior art has brakes. So my initial claim is clearly too broad. Everything I listed in my claim can be found in the prior art train. But when I look at my go-kart, clearly it is not identical to the train. There must be some other differences. For the purposes of this exercise, let's focus on two differences. One is, with my invention, the engine is a gasoline-powered engine, and the prior art has a steam engine. So we can change to a gasoline-powered motor. And what else? This prior art train follows the tracks, but there is no steering mechanism. With my invention, the go-kart can be steered wherever. The prior art train has to follow a track that's been laid down. So let's make another edit to the claim. Now I have a steering mechanism too. So I have some differences now between the prior art I know about and my invention. It's at this point the instructor will say, guess what? We just became aware of another piece of prior art. You may need to edit your claim in light of this prior art we just learned about. So let's see it. And here is our new prior art. It's a motorcycle. Let's see what we have. Multiple wheels, gasoline-powered motor, steering mechanism with the handlebars through to the forks. So this prior art again has everything that our claim currently has. 
What's another way to think of this? Well, my steering mechanism is different. Why? I've got two wheels up front, and the prior art motorcycle has only one. And to have two steerable wheels up front, that seems like a non-trivial difference compared to motorcycle steering, which is relatively simple. As in the case of the go-kart, we need to have both front wheels steer in a coordinated manner. So let's make a claim edit. So with my claim edits, we now state that we have four wheels, and we control the steering of the front wheels by simultaneously operating them with the steering mechanism. So it looks like we have gotten past the prior art we know about. But patent claims are not just about the past. They are also about the future. Let's use our time machine to see a future device. So here is our future device. It has the similar steering mechanism, but we have some things in our claim that this device doesn't have. Let's keep looking. The future vehicle has three wheels, not four, as in our claim. The future vehicle has an electric motor, not a gasoline-powered motor, as in our claim. Recall that we added the gasoline-powered limitation to try to differentiate from our prior art steam train. But now that we've explored further, we see the real departure from the prior art seems to be the steering mechanism, not the motor type. So let's make a few edits to try to help make our claim more future-resistant. First, we'll get rid of the gasoline-powered limitation. It's not helping us that much since we have the motorcycle that already has that feature. Second, we'll get rid of the limitation of specifically having four wheels, and we will restore the word multiple. But we will keep the limitation of wherein two of the wheels are front wheels, continuing to differentiate from the motorcycle prior art in terms of steering. And now, here is the final claim from our workshop. So in doing this, we have considered the prior art devices, the train and the motorcycle, and we've considered our future device. Now you might be thinking, I don't have a crystal ball, I can't know what the future device is going to look like, and that's certainly true that nobody can know with certainty what the future devices will look like. However, a good patent professional usually will try to think about what limitations are really necessary and which ones aren't. And by thinking in that way, they may help make their claims more future resistant. Just take the example of the wheels. We initially started with four wheels, but then when we really thought about it, we realized, you know, maybe it doesn't need to have four wheels, but we do need to have front wheels together that steer. So that paved the way for the possibility of a three-wheeled vehicle or a six-wheeled vehicle or what have you. So thinking in that way can help make the claims more future resistant because the goal is we'd like future devices to infringe on our claims so that we could possibly collect royalties or sue for damages or things like that. Again, these aren't real patent claims but simply intended to illustrate the thought process that may take place while writing claims for an invention. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks again for watching.